Hey, this is a tutorial and it's maybe not a rookie tutorial. Um, it's for, for beginners or for intermediate players and it's to help them think about how they use their lieutenants um, and how, how I maybe see lieutenants being used. Here we go. So it's a tactical tutorial about officers and especially the lieutenants. The first trick I see being used is the snap to trick. That is why most people say that their their officers can be worth it. Um, and if you look in the rules book, um, it's on page 82 and 83 that this is described. And depending on what type of lieutenant, what type of officer you're bringing, um, you can snap to one other unit, two other units, or three or four if you're bringing a major, which you shouldn't do. It's, it's insane. It's very, very costly. So you can basically have a lot of your army that is snapped to. However, they need to be in range of the officer's morale bubble, which is never more than 12 inches for the, the higher officers, um, six inches for, for the, the lieutenants. So for most armies, this is not... It, it it means that you have to clump up quite a lot uh, if you want this to work, which is not always beneficial. Um, upgraded officers do work better for this, um, but only the officers really need it. So most people who try to do this will, will cut down and just have the officer, not any extra helpers in the officer HQ unit. What it really is beneficial for is if you get that first dice and you you know that the enemy is right there, right for the right for the taking, and you can sort of make a first strike with a lot of units at the same time. That is what uh, Snap Two is being done to do. Um, so, for instance, what you'll see is you'll see an officer in a truck with a unit of engineers or a flamer team. That truck has moved up last turn, um, and now it, you get the first order dice, and you snap to both the officer and the flamers. And the officer starts out by, by delivering a pin to the, the target unit, and the flamers then flame the target unit. And that dies because it's already pinned, right? Um, you can also do this if you're having if you have a gun line and you have your officer in the center of that gun line and they're all within the officer's range. He can sort of activate a lot of the guns at the same time. So if you're zeroing in, uh, you get that second shot because you ended your like last turn you ended by starting to zero in. Now you get to shoot again on a five and you do it before the enemy gets to move. Um, and you can do it with a lot of guns at the same time. So that can be also worth it. I've seen that done. Although it is a little bit situational, it's not something that happens that often. That it, the perfect timing is there, the perfect target, and, and you're ready for that. Um, you can also see it with uh, multi-rocket launches. Uh, if you have um, multi-rocket launches, it can be a good idea to activate them early. Um, if especially if the enemy has clumped up near a house or if you can see like one of his units and that can get you like five or other units then having the officer activate a lot of multi launcher rocket launchers at the same time shooting at that will ensure that you have a lot of dice rolling going on towards that unit and you will most likely hit some of it and kill something does it work yes but it is highly situational and you're paying a lot of points for it to be very effective. Um, mostly I would not do this with anything other than maybe a first lieutenant uh, so they can take two extra units because mm, most of your gun lines are not going to be more than two multi-rocket launchers or two uh, howitzers or two mortars shooting. Um, so, and, and if you're paying the points for a major then oh that is a lot of points that you're sinking it's into this one trick and what the enemy can do is just spread out so it's it's very situational whether or not this is ever worth it um, and therefore it's a lot of points to sink into that uh, trick it can work uh, and it can be really devastating if it does 
but it's a lot of points into a trick that you might not be able to set up. So that is the snap two trick. Um, then we have the morale bubble trick. Um, again, the rules are on page 82. Um, and for each level of officer, you get plus one bonus to the units that are within the officer's range. And the, uh, for lieutenants, that is six inches. For higher officers, that is 12 inches. Um, the, the thing here is, again, just a single officer works just as well as anything else. You don't really need extra dudes. So you see this being done quite often. Uh, I do this myself. Um, you you just have the officer, and it, it the officer needs to be safe, but but he needs to follow along with something that needs his morale bonus. Um, so either he hides behind dense terrain and and just gives the backline holders who are in the terrain their morale bonus, um, or he advances behind your tank so that he's in hard cover, small team that he's not going to get hit most of the time. Um, he can even be in a transport that I that's in reserve or outflank because that morale bonus will mean that it's more likely to come on when you want it. Um, all of that I see being done uh, successfully. Uh, by the way, this really works, um, especially if you're min-maxing the size. So you're just just paying the the officer tax and then using him as a morale bonus. Um, it also works especially well if you're planning on doing outflankers. Um, just put the officer in that transport unit that you're outflanking with. Typically, that will be some sort of flamer team or a unit of engineers. Um, put the officer in that in that uh, transport, and it's more likely to come on when you want it. Um, but it also really works well with backline holders. Advancing behind an armored transport vehicle uh, or a, a tank is a little bit more risky uh, because snipers will get you. Um, and, you know, the enemy might roll that lucky seven. Um, but it can be done. So the morale bubble is, is one of the places that I would suggest that you use your officers like this. Um, but again, try to keep them safe. Then we have the tax. This is the other way that I use my officers. Um, and that is, you have to take an officer in almost all platoons and all generic platoons, you have to take an officer and two infantry choices. So, well, I'm going to have to take an officer. Am I going to use him for anything? No, not especially. Um, he might be useful in as the morale bubble, but uh, that's more or less this. Which means that a lot of us, and you'll see this again and again when I'm doing list reviews, a lot of competitive players are just taking the cheapest lieutenant they can find. That will be an inexperienced second lieutenant um, and buying no helpers for him at all. Uh, and then once he's on the table, he is placed somewhere where he is not in any danger. Um, I will typically try to place mine near a, a parking lot if I have a lot of vehicles so that he keeps the vehicles alive. Um, maybe I'll even place him behind a vehicle so that I'll use the vehicle as cover for him and then just go down if anything threatens him. If if uh, I can start by putting him on ambush, but then that will be flipped to a down if anything shoots at him. Um, and Basically, the, the lieutenant becomes a tax that I'm paying and an order monkey so that I have more order dice in the bag just to manipulate that order dice bag a little bit. Um, and that that's a min-maxed way of using him. That is because, I'm one, I'm not very good at using the snap two trick. Um, I don't see the point in, in that most of the time because um, it's very situational. And the other types of, of officer I've tried out sometimes, and there are some of them that I, I can make work, but typically I want to spend my points on something that is more killy, and the officer is just not very killy. Um, so I'll, I'll just buy the cheapest one I can get for the order dice um, and the morale. Another version that I've seen used very successfully is the pin machine officer. Now, the pin machine works especially well if you buy him a horse. And the, the rule that makes this work is that the officer is equipped as shown on the model, which means that almost all players equip the officer with the 
best weapon they can find, typically an SMG or if you're playing Germans, an assault rifle, um, because that means two shots. Now, that makes the officers into a unit that's very likely to hit, even though you're buying him inexperienced. Um, you're very, very likely to hit and deliver a pin. Now, that pin can be worth it. And if you're buying him a horse as well, then that officer sits on a horse and is very, very survivable because he can recce. He can recce away from enemies. He can, um, you know, move uh, up to an armored vehicle and just, if it's open-topped, ping, deliver a pin, and that's it. Um, that armored vehicle is pinned. So that is really, really good. And especially open top vehicles are the targets of pin machines, but you can also see um, pin machines being used against infantry. I sometimes end up using my uh, morale bubble lieutenant as a pin machine as well, um, but it can be dangerous because it's really vulnerable. Um, but a, uh, a mounted officer is not that vulnerable because he has... Uh, because of the horse, he has that escape move nine inches. That means that you have to stay very close to line of sight blockers um, because you want to escape behind that if something shoots at you. But at the end of the turn, you can move up, deliver a, a pin, and then, or even, you know, place your model so that the uh, vehicle that you're pinning can't actually advance or can't turn. Brilliant! Um, especially if it's something like a, a stuk or something where it's only front facing, you can place your officer there and just block it from turning. And he can't do a thing. You can even place it in front. And if he shoots at you, you just wreck it to the side because he can't shoot you then. Um, so, so that blocking is also really, really good. And that pin machine, it's, it's not easy to use. You're going to have to get used to it. You're going to have to train, but it works really well if you can use it. So uh, that is the pin machine tactic. Then we have the machine gunner tactic. And this, for this, you need to go to the rules on page 114 and look at transport vehicles. It says in transport vehicle rules that when you're shooting, if you have multiple weapon systems on your transport vehicle, then the crew can fire one of them. And the transported units can fire the others. You just need one guy to mount and, and use each weapon. So if you're buying a lieutenant, you need him to be regular. Why? Because you, you're putting him in a vehicle and then you're, you're manning the machine guns. Especially This works especially well for brain carriers, white scout cars, uh, LVTs, um, any transport vehicle that has multiple weapon systems um, because your lieutenant can then use their own veterancy to shoot the machine guns. So the, the transport itself doesn't even need to be regular. It can be inexperienced, but the crew can, will still have to fire one of the weapon systems being inexperienced. But the other weapon system suddenly becomes regular because your lieutenant is regular. That is really, that is really cool. And you're deploying your lieutenant inside the DACA transport and he mans the extra MMGs or LMGs and he keeps the transport alive. So it becomes a DACA tank. Yes, it's still open topped. It will get pinned. It's dangerous if the enemy ch tries to charge you, but it works. Is it worth the points? I don't actually know. I'm trying it out myself quite a lot these days, um, but I don't know. In, I'm trying it out. I have a, a, a travel list. Go and, and watch the video on that. I have a travel list, and um, I'm using it in that that this machine gunner tactics, and it works. Is it worth the points? I, I don't really know. Not necessarily. Maybe worth the points. Um, I'm still on the fence about that. But it is a tactic, and it, it does work. The final uh, tactic that I want to talk you through is the assault team tactic. Now, the rules for officers state that you can have zero to two extra crewmen for officers, 
with their weapons as depicted on the models. And this is the kicker here. Because that means that you get free weapon systems, as I talked about earlier. Most people will equip their lieutenant with an SMG or, a, or an assault rifle. But that's the same for the crew, that for the helpers that he can buy. They're also as depicted on the model. So if you're equipping all of them with SMGs, which you should be, then that's a lot of cheap and, and free points for SMGs that you're getting. Now, um, I would want this assault team to be regular or veteran with the maximum amount of helpers with SMGs or assault rifles. Can you do it inexperienced? Yes, you actually can still. If, if you have the points to buy extra helpers for your uh, lieutenant, please, by all means, do so. Now, why not just buy one? Because I want to have max helpers. If, if I'm building an assault team, I want the maximum amount of helpers. Why not just take one? Because that will mean that your lieutenant is still a small team. Difficult to hit. Um, for me, it's a balancing act here between having small team and and being effective enough. If you have extra bodies in that team, that will also protect the team from dying. And if you have three men in that team, that means that if you have prep bombardment, that team cannot die. Yes, you can lose one guy, but that's just one guy. So they become immune to prep bombardment, which is one of the difficulties of using such an assault team here. Um, and if they're veterans, if they're veterans, they're very, very hard to kill. Three-man veterans pushing up somewhere, um, just you know, uh, skirmishing on your own half of the board or pushing against forward deployers, that can work. And they've got six shots from their SMGs or assault rifles. That's dangerous. That's, that's the same as many uh, skirmish infantry teams, units. Um, so it works like a miniature infantry unit. It is a little bit more vulnerable, um, so you, you're going to have to be clever about how to use it. Um, but it's not that much less of an offensive threat. And it, I typically see it done so that it moves up in your second wave, like behind your infantry, um, and it grabs objectives, and it goes down on it. Um, or it pushes against forwards deployers, uh, killing those. And it works but only if you have the points. If you, I, I mean, I would spend points on other things that kill first and then go back and see if I have 14 point left over. That can't actually buy anything really uh, important. Then I'd buy two extra men for my lieutenant. I have 10 points left over. I'll buy one extra man for my regular lieutenant. That's how I, I view this. And then it becomes an assault team and that works as well. So those are the tactics that I've seen deployed using your officers. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, it's not as full a tactic as my tactics on cavalry and infantry, but it, it, it is what it is. It, I don't really see any other tactics being employed. If you guys know of any, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you for this time. Cheers.